chapter of Luke. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. God has looked with favor on the low stats of this servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored. Because the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. God has shown strength with God's arm, has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. God has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and set the rich away empty-handed. God has come to the aid of the servant Israel, remembering mercy, just as God promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and Abraham's descendants forever. The word of life to this day. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. weeks ago I was getting out Christmas ornaments and you know like you that come from different people at different times in my life I've gotten them in different places is that what your ornaments are like and so as I got them out I was kind of telling myself self remembering the stories of the people who these reminded me of and so there were these particular set of their pewter uh, angel ornaments I got out, and I, I remembered the people who gave them to me. At my first church where I was the only pastor, and this couple, I had been there when they met. He was a widower who had come from another church, and she was a recent widow, I had been with her the day that her husband died. And they were both fairly young. They had kids in high school. And I still remember that, that Sunday during the get up and greet people time and they met each other and they had these grins on their faces. And they About six months after her husband died and just a few months after that they got married. And their joy was just huge. And going on a trip one time, they brought me back these ornaments, and I still have them. And I get them out every year. And I thought of another person, Hilda Jean, had made this particular ornament, and I thought of her and her huge smile and her warm presence, and how she was, she was the, the go-to person at this agency for, for uh, mothers and babies. She was the one who knew everything there. People counted on her so much. And when I got get that ornament out, I remember her and her face and the wonderful things that she did. She'd been gone for a long time. But there are things that bring up these stories that I can tell myself. And you have those things. You have the stories that you tell yourself or you tell your family to remind yourselves of where you've been, of who you've come from. You have those stories. Especially at Christmas, you tell those stories over and over again, even though the kids get annoyed by that. <laughs> you still tell them every year because they are stories that matter and they are stories that Speak to who you are, where you've come from, who you've come from. This time of year, Christian churches of all kinds involve kids and adults in reenacting a scene that has to do with the manger. Now, it, it sometimes it's updated for a better production value, and it might involve talking donkeys or talking stars, but it's kind of the same story, isn't it? If you're in a Latino church, the story comes from Las Posadas, how the family
families wander from place to place, remembering Mary and Joseph wandering from place to place, looking for some place that will welcome them in. And in our church, we have the kids participate in the story. We have them acted out. We don't just tell them the story. We have them be the story. Now, we don't do this just because they are adorable in their costumes, even though they are. <laughs> and we don't do it just because we love those pictures, even though we do. I still have a picture of my son as an angel. I'm sure he hates it. <laughs> we have our kids act out the story to let them know that it is their story. Not a story that's just told to them, but one that belongs to them, that they belong in the story. They are not outside of the stories of faith, and the faith stories are somewhere else. And they just occasionally look at them. This reminds our kid community that they are integrally part of the stories of faith, participants, that they own the stories. It's not someone's story told to us. It's our story that tells us a thing about who we are and where we've come from. And so we put our kids into the Today we hear Mary's song. It's called the Magnificat from the first word in Latin. And we hear that a young woman, still a girl, Mary, sings this song. It's her own version of Hannah's song from 1 Samuel. Hannah, do you remember who Hannah was? Hannah was the mother of Samuel. Hannah was the one who, who prayed that she might have a child because she didn't have one, and that she would dedicate her child to God in the temple if she had one, and she did. And then we hear this kind of heartbreaking story as little Samuel is kind of a toddler. She takes him to Eli, the priest, takes him to the temple said as soon as he's weaning, so he's a little guy, and she takes him and she leaves him there because that's what she has promised to do, and that is her song that Mary sings. Now Mary can sing this because she's been singing it all her life. She was raised in the faith. It's her story, too, that she was brought up on. And so she is able, when she needs this song, she is able to draw from it. It's in her mind, it's in her heart. And she pulls it up and she modifies it and sings her own version of Hannah's song. She did sing it. Modified it. She, she radicalized it. She did for her own context, because it was part of her, and she knew that it belonged to her, and so she sang it to her own context. Her context being living in a world that was very divided, people divided by class and race and religion, the haves and the have-nots were evident. She lived in a world ruled by a merciless tyrant. And then she sings the song. And it's not meek and mild Mary in this song. But she sounds like a revolutionary. She sounds like Che Guevara in a pale blue scarf. She is a revolutionary. And so she alters Hannah's song. To say, God has scattered the arrogant and proud and pulled the powerful off of their throne. 
thrones and lifted up the lowly. And then similar to Hannah's song, she says, God has filled the hungry and sent the rich away empty. The words from 1 Samuel from Hannah go like this. The bows of mighty warriors are shattered, but those who were stumbling now dress themselves in power. Those who were filled full now sell themselves for bread, but the ones who were starving are now fat from food. Hannah's song was a little revolutionary to start with. Mary claimed the song as her own. It was hers. It told her who she was from way back in her past. So recently, a modern songwriter has, in the same spirit as Mary, rewritten words to a well-known song. The song, I'm sure you've heard it, even though it's pretty new. Mary, did you know? We you know that song. We keep hearing it. You got a target everywhere else you go. <laughs> Mary, did you know? And this woman claimed that song and wrote some new words to it. In part, they say this. Mary, did you know that your ancient words would still leap off our pages? Mary, did you know that your spirit song would echo through the ages? Did you know that your holy cry would be subversive word? That the tyrants would be trembling when they know your truth is heard? Mary, did you know that we hear your voice for the healing of the nations? Mary, did you know your unsettling cry can help renew creation? Claiming the song and bringing it in subversive word is for today that hope is born for everyone. Haves and have nots. The people divided by a great gulf. Hope is born for everyone. And the story is not told to us, but the story is 